A proposal in Texas would ban landlords from charging a pet rent or a pet security deposit. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so once again, there's another politician out there who wants to get rid of pet rent and pet security deposits. They're mad. They're angry. They want landlords. They say they're unregulated. What landlords are doing, it's not fair. It's punishing tenants. And I 100% disagree, okay? Simply put, landlords have to charge pet rent, have to charge pet security deposit because pets cause an un ordinary amount of wear and tear on a property and if you were a landlord you would know this so yeah this is absolutely ridiculous i do not agree with it i hate any law rule or regulation which regulates how much landlords can charge for upkeep of the property and simply put right if you think that something like this is not fair then you have the right to go somewhere where they don't charge pet rent you know, or where they don't charge pet security deposits. There's plenty of landlords who don't charge those things who are willing to accept you as a renter. Or you can just get rid of your pets, okay? Either way, you are not being forced to live in my property, you know, and if you don't want to pay the fees that I'm charging, then you can move along. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you're a landlord out there right now, do you charge pet rent or a pet security deposit? Okay. Or do you even allow pets in your property? I know plenty of landlords who do not allow pets because of the wear and tear, and they're not willing to accept that in their properties. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. It's your house. It's your apartment building, whatever. You can do what you want with it, in my opinion. Now, obviously, I've heard of all sorts of proposals to try to force landlords to take pets when they don't really want to, but we're not talking about that today. So anyway, let's get into this article. This article is coming from KXAN.com, and it says, Texas Politics, lawmaker proposes capping monthly pet fees for Texas renters. Yeah, and uh, Texas is not known as being an anti-landlord place, right? So I don't think that this is going to pass, but who knows, okay? Who knows at this point in time? Anyway, let's get into the article and see what it says. A monthly fee or initial deposit is standard for Texas renters who have pets, but a bill filed this legislative session could charge what land or could change what landlords can require in the future. State Representative John Rosenthal, Democrat from Houston, brought forward House Bill 1166 to potentially alter what landlords in Texas can tack onto a pet owner's lease. The legislation, if it passes, would allow landlords to either cap a monthly pet fee at $20 or collect a one-time refundable pet deposit at the outset of someone's lease. However, the proposal would prevent them from doing both. Rosenthal, whose family has four dogs, told KXAN that these kind of costs imposed by landlords are currently unregulated in the state. He said his bill would place some reasonable limits that do not exist at the moment. So yeah, this, this landlord owns four dogs, right? I, I mean, I mean, not landlord, but this politician owns four dogs, right? I own a dog. I'm a landlord, but I see the truth, okay? I do not lie. I'm not trying to pander for votes. I see the damage that my dog does to the property, okay? My dog, you know, if you got down and you smelled the carpet, you know, when I, and it's been a while since I've had it cleaned, you know, you can smell the dog in the carpet, okay? So just imagine if you're a landlord, you have to go in there, you have to, you know, clean up to get that dog smell out of there. You know, my dog sheds. There's dog hairs everywhere in my house, okay? You can't keep them all cleaned up. Right. So after the tenant moves out, I'm going to have to clean up all those dog hairs. OK, what else? Um, cats, they, they have a tendency of spraying. OK, and so you might have to clean up places where the cat has sprayed. OK, and, you know, look underneath your carpets and in the carpet pad and you'll often see where the dog has urinated on the carpet. And, you know, obviously you can't clean it up without removing the former pad. So, I mean, there's all sorts of issues, you know, I, I talk about my hardwood floors. I've talked about that before, how my dog's nails have literally scratched my hardwood floors. 
you know, just think about the, the hundreds or thousands of dollars in damages that a dog causes in terms of wear and tear that people who are living in the house do not cause. And then you begin to understand why as a landlord, you know, it's smart to charge pet rent or a pet security deposit. The pet security deposit is, you know, a good thing in my opinions. But, you know, once again, you know, this politician, to me, the politicians are always trying to pander for votes, right? So they'll throw a proposal like this out there. And I don't know who they're really targeting, honestly, because, you know, like, I don't think that all of a sudden saying, oh, you know what, uh, we, we got a bunch of people who are renters who own dogs. Now they won't be overcharged. Yeah, that's not going to get a lot of votes. So, you know, to me, it's just uh, one of those things where you have a politician who wants to make it look like they're doing something and that they're, the thing they're doing is pro-tenant, right? Because they know that there's so many tenants out there that that can get them additional votes. Absolutely. Landlords should be able to cover the costs incurred with having a pet in the rental space, Rosenthal said, but those deposits should be refundable if there's no damage or if they're going to charge a monthly pet rent that would be capped at a reasonable amount. We're going to ask the landlords, landowners to choose. Have a reasonable deposit or a reasonable pet rent so that they can still cover their costs without basically pricing family members out of their homes. They're not pricing anybody out of their homes, okay? That's the thing. When a person moves in, they are made aware of all of these costs, okay? So if I make aware that, hey, I'm going to be charging an additional five hundred dollars as a pet security deposit before you move in well that's not like the person was already living there and then i come up to him give me 500 bucks or you gotta go no that's just saying hey if you can't afford this then you're not going to be living in my property so yeah i'm not pricing them out what i'm doing is i'm setting the terms just like i'm setting the rent you know if i charge my rent and it's you know a thousand dollars a month well, is that pricing out people? Yeah, of course it is, right? But the people who can afford it are the only ones who are going to be looking at the property in the first place. So, you know, I, I have no issue with that. I think that um, capping the, the cost, you know, the cost, they vary too. They, they certainly vary. And that's another issue right there. There's a big difference between somebody owning one small dog and then somebody who owns like, Let's say four German shepherds, okay? <laughs> you know, like I honestly probably wouldn't even accept the tenant who had four German shepherds into any of my properties. But let's say you're a landlord who does, right? Should the landlord who, who is accepting the four German shepherds be able to charge more pet rent than the person, uh, uh, than for the person who only has one, uh, you know, small Yorkshire terrier? I think so. You know, I believe so. I believe the person should be able to charge a higher security deposit or a higher pet rent based on, you know, how many pets, what kind of pets, etc. Okay. He said he believes changing this could also help with the housing affordability crisis that people living in Texas cities are dealing with now. Not only is housing scarce, rental housing is scarce, forcing the cost to go up. But then you add these types of fees on top of that, he said. It literally forces families to choose between. In thousands of cases across Texas in the last few years, families are making decisions between being able to keep their pet that they consider a family member or having a place to live. It's an untenable situation. And it's an unfortunate situation. But if you are so low income, right, that you can barely afford housing and you have a pet rent that pushes you over the edge where you can no longer afford housing, then the smart thing to do, remember pets aren't people. This isn't your kids we're talking about, okay? The smart thing to do would be to, you know, find a new home for that pet and that way you'll be able to afford the rent, okay? That's the smart, logical thing that an adult would do. They would say, okay, I am going to, Find a place that I can afford and ha we'll just have to let this pet go because I cannot afford to keep it. Okay? Pets are a luxury. It's just a luxury. Simply put, no one is entitled to a pet. Nobody has to have a pet. 
And that is something that a lot of people in this lawmaker included have forgotten. So yeah, landlords should have the ability to charge whatever pet rent they think is necessary for them to cover the additional costs and the additional burden of having a pet in their property.